Matt Damon from left, Harvey Weinstein, George Clooney Getty Images Finally, the men of Hollywood are speaking about the Harvey Weinstein scandal. Perhaps they should reconsider. George Clooney, who smugly comports himself as Hollywood's moral authority, appeared on Today to voice his outrage. Keeping to his earlier, flimsy assertion that he knew next to nothing, Clooney then cast blame upon rumors of actress friends Weinstein bragged about betting IDID and to really necessarily believe that, because to believe that would be to believe some bad things about actresses that I know and like, and IDID and to really buy into that the staffers who escorted actresses to meet with Weinstein those who kept Weinstein's secrets and that old standby, the media. Whoever had that story and DID and to write it should be responsible, Clooney said. I want to know what kind of ad dollars were spent from the Weinstein Company and Miramax. I'm furious. I want to know who knew. Aside from the well-documented attempts by many media outlets to break this story over three decades, maybe Clooney need look no further than his friend Matt Damon. In 2004, apparently at Weinstein's behests, Damon reportedly called the New York Times reporter to shut down an expose about the mogul's sexual predation. Damon has denied knowing anything about the story's content. In his initial statement two weeks ago, Damon expressed complete surprise. This morning, I just feel absolutely sick to my stomach, he told Deadline. We know this stuff goes on in the world. I did five or six movies with Harvey. I never saw this. Note the clever wording I never saw this. It's almost Clintonian. Of course Damon never saw anything. Sexual assaults and rapes don't generally occur in public. As more victims have come forward, including his old friend Gwyneth Paltrow, Damon has been forced to backtrack. Turns out he did know, but in his new version, Damon didnt think Weinstein was a predator. Anyway, Damon said no harm, no foul. I knew that story about Gwyneth, Damon told Good Morning America this week. Damon said his pal Ben Affleck, Paltrow's then-boyfriend, told him. I knew that they had come to whatever agreement or understanding that they had come to, Damon said. She had handled it and she was, you know, the first lady of Miramax. And he treated her incredibly respectfully. Always. What about Rose McGowan, who tweeted that she told Affleck that Weinstein had abused her at the 1997 Sundance Film Festival? Wouldn't Affleck share such alarming information with Damon as well? And wouldn't Damon tell his pal George Clooney? Wouldn't Clooney tell his friend Brad Pitt, who confronted Weinstein after his harassment of Paltrow? Wouldn't Pitt tell Clooney that then wife Angelina Jolie had also been a victim? How is it that female film students at NYU reportedly are warned not to intern for Weinstein? Yet the Hollywood elite know nothing, even Tom Hanks, the Nay Plus ultra of Hollywood good guys, is loath to condemn Weinstein. Look, I don't want to rag on Harvey, he told the New York Times, but so obviously something went down there. Really why not rag on Weinstein? What is there to lose? Hollywood never misses a chance to call out Donald Trump's treatment of women. Is it down to politics, or do even the town's most esteemed have equally dark secrets? If so, who will lecture us? Hanks, like his regal, deeply connected peer Meryl Streep, insists he heard nothing. Hawking his new book of short stories this week, Hanks told NPR that he knew of mere shenanigans on film sets, not violent, consistent stories of harassment, abuse and rape. Get fresh out of Juilliard in 2003, aspiring actress Jessica Chastain knew. I was warned from the beginning, she tweeted. The stories were everywhere. To deny that is, to create an environment for it to happen again. So why are Hollywood's liberal lions, bastions of male decency, ones who've hinted at runs for political office, refusing to admit they were complicit, that they were afraid for their own careers, that they were cowards and could have done better, perhaps they're not innocent either. Perhaps they traded their own consciences for careers. Weinstein gave Clooney, then toiling away on television's ensemble drama, -er, his first leading film role, in the 1996 horror movie From Dusk Till Dawn. As head of Miramax, Weinstein made Damon and Affleck Oscar winners for their 1997 debut film, Good Will Hunting. Clooney and Damon spent the next three decades on a stratospheric trajectory. Affleck's path HASNT been a smooth, waylaid by poor career choices and substance abuse issues. And he, too, has been accused of sexual harassment. Aside from groping two female TV hosts in 2003 and 2004, two more women allege that Affleck randomly groped multiple women at a 2014 Golden Globes party. On GMA, Damon made an unfortunate comparison. If, he said, Weinstein had done any of this in public, and it was at the Golden Globes or something like that and I somehow missed it, then I'm sorry. There has to be a comeuppance for all of this, Clooney said. All of the people who were part of that chain. Sure. Ben Affleck has spoken about Weinstein once, right after the scandal broke. His statement and Damon's are nearly identical.
I am saddened and angry that a man who I worked with used his position of power to intimidate, sexually harass and manipulate many women over decades, he wrote. The additional allegations of assault that I read this morning made me sick. Affleck has yet to answer to the latest charges against him. Instead, he's spent the past two weeks taking his daughters, in full view of the paparazzi, for ice cream and to church. He's also been shot going to outpatient sessions and with his newly adopted rescue dog. Details of Affleck's new wholesome, healthy life are often leaked to the tabloids. But such clumsy attempts at image rehab may no longer sway an increasingly sophisticated public, one well-versed in the dark arts of media manipulation. It's well understood that Affleck, whose brother Casey settled two sexual harassment claims of his own, and won an Oscar with Affleck and Damon's help, is on the verge of a global press junket for Justice League. The success of that film, and Ben's public demeanor, may make or break his waning career. Clooney and Damon, meanwhile, are speaking up because they have no choice. If they're on a promotional tour for their new movie Suburbicon, all about the false promises and hypocrisies of small-town, unsophisticated America. Hollywood, after all, loves nothing more than preaching to our naivete.